Welcome to Adam Explains, where I break down tough topics and give you the facts. Before we begin, if I could take this time to request that you like, comment and subscribe if you enjoy this video. But without further ado, let's get into it. Macronutrients are nutrients that are required in large quantities as part of our diet. The three macronutrients required by humans are carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Energy is provided by each macronutrient in the form of calories. The approximate amount of calories each macronutrient provides per gram is as follows carbohydrates 4 calories per gram, proteins 4 calories per gram and fats 9 calories per gram. Carbohydrates. A carbohydrate is a biomolecule that is made of carbon, oxygen and hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen and oxygen atoms have a ratio of 2 to 1 much the same as water albeit with a few exceptions which may explain the significant weight loss of water weight on low carb diets such as the ketogenic diet within the first few weeks. Technically speaking, carbohydrates are the hydrates of carbon, hence the name. The term carbohydrate is synonymous with saccharide, a group that includes cellulose, sugar and starch. The saccharides are split into four main groups. Monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides and disaccharides are commonly referred to as sugars and they are usually recognisable by names with the suffix "-ose". Example, glucose. Oligosaccharides and polysaccharides are typically polymers of simple sugars like monosaccharides, the amount of which is between 3 to 10 monosaccharides for oligosaccharides and over 10 monosaccharides for polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are what make up your glycogen or stored carbohydrates in your muscles and liver. Proteins. Proteins are macromolecules, aka large biomolecules made up of one or more long chains of amino acid residues. A protein is made up of at least one long polypeptide, a linear chain of amino acid residues. Short polypeptides containing less than 20 to 30 residues are considered as peptides or oligopeptides and not as proteins. Once a protein is formed, it will exist for a period of time, ranging from minutes to years, but most proteins in human cells last around about one to two days, before becoming degraded and ultimately recycled through a process known as protein turnover. Many proteins act as enzymes that catalyse biochemical reactions. As such, they are incredibly important to metabolism. In humans, proteins are fundamental in the diet to provide the essential amino acids that cannot be otherwise synthesised from within the body itself. Protein is commonly known for its role in the growth and repair of our bodies, and those looking to build muscle mass often favour higher amounts of proteins in their diet for this very reason. Fats Fats, also known as triglycerides, are all esters of the alcohol, glycerol and fatty acid chains. Fats in the wider sense are commonly synonymous and placed under the broad umbrella of lipids. However, in the stricter sense, fats are lipids that are solid at room temperature, whereas oils are lipids that are liquid at room temperature. Whilst fats have been overly demonised, fats undertake structural and metabolic functions, and as such they are a necessary part of the human diet. This is due to the fact that some essential fatty acids are not synthesised by the human body, so consumption is important. Fat-soluble vitamins such as A, D, E and K can only be digested, absorbed and transported in conjunction with fats. Fats play a fundamental role in promoting healthy cell function, protecting organs against shock, maintaining body temperature and maintaining healthy skin and hair. Fats tend to be described based on their length. SCFA short chain fatty acids, MCFA, medium chain fatty acids, LCFA, long chain fatty acids, VLCFA, very long chain fatty acids. That being said, most fats in the food that we eat are made up of medium chain fatty acids and long chain fatty acids, whether the source is vegetable or animal in nature. Fats and oils are categorised dependent on their molecular structure, in particular the number of bonding carbon atoms. Saturated fats have no double bonds between the carbons in the chain, whereas unsaturated fats have one or more double bonds between the carbon atoms. Those with multiple double carbon bonds are referred to as polyunsaturated fats. Unsaturated fats can be split into cis fats and trans fats, the latter of which is very rare in nature. Studies tend to favour cis unsaturated fats over saturated fats in regards to cardiovascular health with Hooper et al. in 2015 stating lifestyle advice to all those at risk of cardiovascular disease and to lower risk population groups should continue to include permanent reduction of dietary saturated fats and partial replacement by unsaturated fats. 
It should be stressed that this is cis unsaturated fats because trans fat, a form of unsaturated fat, has been found to increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. That being said, science wouldn't be science without its contradictions. Despite Hooper et al's findings in 2015, an article published in the British Medical Journal in 2016 found that dietary saturated fat was of no consequence to the health of one's heart. Despite popular belief amongst doctors and the public, the conceptual model of dietary saturated fats clogged a pipe is just plain wrong. A landmark systemic review and meta-analysis of observational studies showed no association between saturated fat consumption and all-cause mortality, coronary heart disease, coronary heart disease mortality, ischemic stroke or type 2 diabetes in healthy adults. Similarly, in the secondary prevention of coronary heart disease, there is no benefit from reducing fat, including saturated fat, on myocardial infarction, cardiovascular or or all-cause mortality. So as you can see, the healthiness or unhealthiness of fats is still somewhat up for debate amongst the scientific literature. When you consume more calories than you need, your body will store the excess energy in your fat cells, which are also known as your adipose tissue. So there you have it, the main human macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fats. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I've been Adam at Adam Explains and I'll see you guys again next time.